Hello, everyone. Uh, so in Java, um, there is something uh, which is called as covariant data types in object-oriented framework uh, that is also present in C++. So what this means is that you can have a class, um, let's say that returns a reference to itself, okay? And then you can have a, a child class that um, extends your base class and the child class, uh, the method of the child class can do that itself as well, okay? So this get method is also present in child class and what this does is basically returns the reference of the child class uh, rather than returning the reference of the base class, okay? So we have a base class, one method that returns, uh, you know, this reference of the base class and then the same method in, uh, in, child, uh, in child class, which basically gives you the reference of the child uh, object. Uh, now, what you can do is basically say that, okay, you know, declare a tester object, which is, a type of superclass, okay, not your child class, but actually it's it's a type of superclass. So, if I if I type superclass space tester colon, then this means that I have simply declared a tester object belonging to this superclass. But once I say that this tester is new tester, you know, um, new tester constructor, what this means is that I'm instantiating this tester, which is a base type reference and I'm instantiating it using my child constructor. Okay. Now, what this means is that it will create a tester um, you know, object. And then if you simply say that, okay, you know, tester.get, this method will return this child uh, type reference. Okay, because if this is, you see, this method gets you that, you know, the child, uh, the child object reference. And if you will simply check that whether this is an instance of tester, you will see that you know this will print true. So this, like these, um, you know, the output types of this get method, they are called covariant data data types in the sense that they vary, but they vary, you know, in some um, in some synchronous way. Uh, let, let's say that. So we have uh, different objects. Uh, being returned by different, uh, you know, child classes, um, but all of those, you know, references are related in some sense. So that is why they are called covariant. They vary synchronously. Uh, the next thing that we can have in Java are basically, you know, there are two types of there are two types of data types that we have. The first one, data type is you know what we call as primitive data type. So primitive data type means you know small and small float, small boolean. But then what Java allows you to do is basically wrap those primitive data types to your, let's say, more managed uh, reference types. What this means is that you can, you know, let's say that if you want to declare an integer, if you use capital I, N, T, E, G, A, R, G, E, R, then what will happen is that, you know, you create a managed integer that will wrap your int. In here, uh, it, it, so basically what you can do is that you can you know, initialize that integer using some string, okay? So what I'm trying to say is that, you know, parse this string four, five, six into your new integer. You know, this cross line is basically, a, you know, Java way of saying that, you know, you shouldn't use this method. I think so this, if you compile this, it will throw you a warning. It will not throw you an error. So this will compile, but, what this means is that, you know, the cross means that this method is depreciated. You shouldn't be using it that. But in any case, I can say that, okay, convert, you know, a string of numbers to my integer. So I want to say that, okay, integer A is four, five, six. Okay. Maybe that's it's not a good way of doing that, but, you know, maybe a good way of initializing your integers is, you know, uh, you know, let's say that, you know, some string, if you use this, you know, static method of this, in, you know, parse int, then what can happen is that you can, you know, parse this string using this parse int static method of this integer object, and that will give you, you know, four, five, six. So you can type cast different, you know, objects into your integer. And this is useful. Like if you if you if you were to do this, you know, it will throw you an error. You cannot do simply, you know, string and then 
use this primitive data type to type cast your string into an integer. Okay, so you should always use this managed uh, data type of integers uh, to create, you know, to do anything useful basically. This will also uh, help you, you know, to create generics, uh, generic lists. So let's talk about that. So let's say I want to create a list, okay, but I'm not sure what will be the data type of that list. So I want to create a list, but I'm not sure whether it's a list of balloons, whether it's a li list of integers, or whether it's a list of houses, whether it's a list of, uh, you know, any object basically. So what you can do is basically write a templated class, okay? So when I simply say that, you know, this is, this is class which is, you know, uh, which is encapsulated in this greater than less than simple symbol, then this means that I'm going to create a generic list of type capital T. Now this generic list obviously will be an array. So it will contain some array of that type. It will have some, you know, variable, some counter. What I will do is that, you know, I will pass, I will pass the size of uh, while I'm creating this list, I will simply say that, okay, you know, create this, that list of four objects. And then it will create, you know, those four objects, and then it will type cast those objects into your, you know, type T array. Um, and so this is explicit, once again, this, this will generate warning, you're saying that, you know, this is maybe not um, safe in some sense, uh, but you can do this, you know, it will compile correctly. And then we have a method that adds, you know, an item of type T into uh, my array. And then we have a method that basically gets a particular item T, which exists at some index, right? And the way of declaring or using this generic list class is basically say that, okay, this is going to be new generic, generic list. But you see, I'm saying that this is, this is a list of, you know, managed integer types, not you know, primitive int, int, uh, small int types. So this is a managed list of integers that, you know, I pass, you know, random 10, it will create, you know, some uh, 10 elements and in, uh, a generic list of integers of 10 elements, okay? And this VAR keyword is somewhat similar to auto keyword in C++, you know, this is just to say that, okay, I'm, I don't want to specify explicitly the data type of this my list variable. And then you can simply say, okay, okay, you know, add some item or, you know, get uh, the value of some item, okay? Now, so this you see, uh, once I get the index, it will return this type T, which I know that, you know, it's an integer. And so therefore print, print LN can automatically pass this integer into, you know, string because, you know, the, this is what print LN expects, right? So it expects integer, but in, in uh, it's, it expects a string, but you know, or this type casting is done automatically since I'm using integer managed data type, not, you know, let's say, I, I think even if you use int, it will, uh, if you let's say pass some int data type in print and then function, you know, maybe uh, it will you know, compile, I'm not sure. But in this case, at least, you know, this, this type casting from integer to string is safe. Um, Right, so this is, and so, the, but this is not just for integers. Now you can have an array, a generic list of balloons, right? Just write a class balloon. I don't know, put some, put some variables, you know, attributes of balloon, then, you know, just pass that balloon, uh, you know, create a generic list of balloon on, on, you know, of balloon objects on fly. So this cannot be like, this can be anything, you know, if you have a custom data, data, data type that you have defined in the form of class, then you can simply type super class in here. Okay, that will create a 10 element list of your super type object. Okay, um, so in the next videos, we are going to see uh, interfaces.